In this video, we're going to talk about why transformations sometimes have the opposite effect. So let's dive into this video. What does that mean, transformations, and what does it mean having the opposite effect? Well, let's take a look at a parent function like this y equals square root of x function. We can get a nice table here by plotting some uh, points, and let's put some values in for x that are easy to take the square root of, like 0, 1, 4, and 9. The square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3. Now let's take a look at a function that has been transformed, a square root function that has been, in this case, shifted. And when we look at this x minus 2, let's again make a table, but let's pick some values that are going to make this easy to take the square root of. So for example, I could put in 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. Or I could put in 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, the square root of 1 is 1. Or I could put in 6, uh, 6 minus 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, and I could put in 11, 11 minus 2 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. Now, let's go ahead and plot these points on this graph. Let's graph the parent function first. So that's going to be here at 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. And that's like our basic graph right there. But let's look what happens with this x minus 2 when we plot these points. So here we have 2 comma 0, I'll just put an x, 3 comma 1, uh, 6 comma 2, see 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2 is right about here, and etc. So basically what you can see is this graph looks something like that. So what's actually happened in this situation here? Well you can see that this original graph has shifted to the right two units. But when you look at the equation, you might be saying to yourself, Mario, it's x minus 2. Why is it shifting to the right 2? Why is it having that opposite effect of what you would think? You'd think minus 2 would be left 2, right? So if you look at the table here, you can see that in order to get an output of 0, the x value had to be 2 more than in the parent function. Same thing over here. See, in order for this to yield an output or a y value of 3, x value actually had to be two units more, see 11. And so that's why the graph is actually shifting to the right two. The way I like to think about it is when it's grouped with the x, whether it's inside of the parentheses with the x or underneath the square root or in the absolute value bars, but it's grouped with the x, I know it's going to affect the x-axis direction, this horizontal direction, but it's going to have the opposite effect. If it's not grouped with the x, like if it was you know, adding one, or if you had a two out here in front, that's going to affect the y values. Let's look at another uh, example. So we're going to still work with this parent function, the square root function, but now let's look at y equals the square root of 2x. <clears throat> so what do you think is going to happen in this situation? Well, let's make a table again. I'm going to put values in for x that are easy to uh, take the square root of. So if I put in 0, 2 times 0 is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. If I put in a half, 2 times a half is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. If I put in 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. And if I put in 4.5, 2 times 4.5 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. Now, let's go ahead and plot this table and the original parent function table on this graph here. So, starting with the parent function, we've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3. And so there's our original graph like so, whereas if I plant, plot these points, we've got 0, 0, which is at the origin, 1 half, 1 is right here, uh, 2, 2 is right here, 4.5, uh, 3 is right here. So this graph looks something like this. Now what's happening in this case? Well, you can see here, it's like we're squeezing on this parent function in the horizontal direction. So this is actually a horizontal shrink of one half, not two. You would think two would be like a horizontal stretch by a factor of two, but it's actually the opposite. What I mean by the opposite in this case is instead of multiplying by two, you're dividing by two, or you can think of it as multiplying by the reciprocal, a horizontal shrink of one half. Now you might be saying, Mario, why is that? Well, notice here on the table, see in order to get a y, value or an output of 1, the x value had to be half as much as over here. See, in order to get an output or a y value of 2, 
the x value had to be half as much. See, this was two, this was four. Same thing here, this is 4.5, this is nine. So it looks like when you look at the equation that you're doubling, but what's happening is that the x value has to be half as much to yield that same output. And so graphically what that does is it actually shrinks it horizontally. So great job if you were able to follow these examples, but if you wanna see more, which I highly recommend, follow me over to my recent video here talking about transformations where we talk about not just the stretching and shrinking, but the reflections, translations, etc. Follow me over to that video, we'll get some more practice, I'll see you there.